Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody. I'm one of the consultants in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Home and Infertility Center. Today I'm going to talk to you about something very common. We all seem to know it. But now comes some evidence that looks at one of our commonest treatments. What effect does clomiphene and letrozole have on the endometrium? And you'll say, yes, I know it. I know clomiphene is an anti-estrogen. It may decrease the endometrial thickness. Yes, it does. But can we go a step further? Can we look at what happens to the endometrial analysis on both these drugs? This was a study which was done in 2011. which looked at clomiphene citrus versus letrozole molecular analysis of the endometrium in women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Let's come to clomiphene first. If you compare the effect on endometrial receptivity, we know that ovulation occurs in about 80% of cycles where clomiphene was given. Pregnancy rate varies between 25 and 60%. Clomiphene resistant is between 15 and 40%. And there is no doubt that clomiphene, in some cases, manifests a negative impact on the endometrium. Letrozole is an aromatase inhibitor. It, in fact, does not block anything in terms of its pituitary, but induces ovulation by lowering estrogen levels. And what happens? The FSH levels rise, looking at the low E2 levels, it does not bind to the estrogen receptors unlike clomiphene and it's used in clomiphene resistance. The few markers of endometrial receptivity and these are influenced by letrozole and clomiphene. And what is this, this study looked at? It has looked at those factors which are used in endometrial receptivity. They have picked about three or four factors. They have also seen their linkage to PCOS. Now LIF, which is leukemia inhibitory factor, was decreased in PCOS. And there's an airplane going, and I'm I'm, uh, talk, I'm giving this lecture outside, so that's a helicopter going upstairs. Uh, that's one of the beauties of doing a lecture uh, in the outdoors. Uh, it's different. You do it with a wooden cabin at your back, and that's uh, tr truly a, a, a nice way to do it. But anyway, let's come back to the talk. They also looked at DKK1, which was disrupted in PCOS. And they also looked at vascular endothelial growth factor and fibroblast growth factor, both of which are affected in women with PCOS and seem to have an impact after giving letrozole and clomiphene. 23 participants, PCOS patients, letrozole 2.5 milligram from day three to seven, five patients. Clomiphene, 50 milligram from day three to day seven, five patients and controls number five. An endometrial biopsy was done seven days after LH surge. Estrogen and progesterone was measured. Let's have a look at it. LIF, one of the factors of immunocompression was decreased in clomiphene. Fibroblast factors, 22, was significantly reduced in clomiphene compared to controls. Letrozole slightly increased it. DKK1 had higher expression, with letrozole a much higher expression compared to clomiphene. The study also suggested that protein expression of LIF is associated with infertility because LIF anchors to the trophoblast. Letrozole seems to increase this much better and may again play a part in preventing miscarriages. Again, it's not been proved, but that's one of the suggestions. Clomiphene also downregulates vascular endothelial factor A. That could also tell us why it gives a thin endometrium and why giving estrogen on a thin endometrium is a complete waste of time. Again, the fibroblast factor 22 
stimulates proliferation and activation of cells and this is increased with letrozole. Letrozole has better studies on vascular and endometrial neovascularization. Progesterone is also lower in clomiphene and th this could also explain about the inert nature of progesterone resistance, but that's something which is of a different discussion. But what does this study again tell us? It tells us that letrozole at a molecule level may be better than clomiphene. It may be giving us a slightly better implantation rate. It may lead to a lower miscarriage rate. Again, that is something debatable, but there seems to be more and more evidence coming up that letrozole may in fact be more beneficial than clomiphene. Maybe as the new guidelines have come out in PCOS, which have made letrozole the first line of treatment, we may be slowly and surely moving over to letrozole as the first line rather than clomiphene as the first line. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this talk. Please do share it and let others benefit. Thank you very much.